Tonight we have team coverage to bring you the latest updates. Our reporter Gabrielle Crociolo is at Day Hall where more racist graffiti was found overnight. And Amber McElrath is in studio to recap the open forum the new house school held today. But right now let's get to Citrus TV's Ricky Sayer who is at the Barn Center sit-in. Ricky? For more than 55 straight hours, students, protesters have been inside of the barn thinner. Today, they got the chance to meet directly with the chancellor. He responded to their questions. He responded to their demands, admitting he's been ignorant on some issues, but that he is responsible for this university. Here is how he responded to those demands. There are some people who have asserted very strong to, strongly to me uh, that uh, there is a hazy, unclear line between free speech and hate speech. Uh, and the Student Affairs Committee of the Board of Trustees, which is, includes a lot of trustees, agreed to work with Student Association to make exactly this happen. So I think this one is an open door. I agree to it, and I will, anything that, any help that you need from the Chancellor to make this one happen, I will give. My, what I've learned is there is a the, the, I've learned more about the temporary course that's being offered and the curriculum process for the permanent course that's being proposed through the schools and colleges and with the University Senate. I've also learned that there are many faculty who care deeply about this and deeply about the concerns that have been voiced. Some of this already occurs, so when, when I read the demand I was a little concerned that it's also a comment on the quality of what we're doing now. I'm a firm believer that if people don't trust the process, we need to fix the process. And so um, I want to work with as many people as want to work with me to get our conduct process in the place that everyone feels like it's just. This is the one, uh, this is the one number that I have the most ignorance of as of Monday. Okay, so I've talked to multiple students, I've talked to multiple students since Monday who described the experience of having a roommate who they had reason to fear, uh, good reason to fear, uh, harbored views of racism toward their roommate. Uh, I, my, my belief is unless somebody comes up with a really strong argument, I have heard from multiple international students about the language ability issue. I, I, I certainly have heard about the desire for more diversity and inclusion training uh, and just the need for more counselors, and I've heard, and I, I think people are working on it, but it is my belief that the Campus Facilities Advisory Board, the, the Facilities Department, Campus Planning, all the folks involved should be able to achieve the goal here. I don't know whether that goal is best achieved in a standalone building as part of another building or what spaces are available, but I think that people should be involved in picking the best option. Curriculum change that does not deeply involve the faculty <coughs> never succeeds, right? Curriculum, uh, so, so what seems to be needed here is curriculum in form involving the faculty that is inclusive and involves a, a productive dialogue with the students affected. I will just say my view is that participation in a peaceful protest, given the events that have happened and the dialogue that needs to continue, should not be subject to any discipline. This movement, Not Again SU, says they are about to come out with a revised list of demands. We'll bring them to you when we can. Reporting outside the Barnes Center, Ricky Sayer, Citrus TV News.